now that we got through some administrative stuff, we're going to immediately dive into our first technical topic. In this section, we're going to start to look at some of the internals of Node.js. Once we have a better idea of how Node works internally, we'll then be able to leverage that knowledge to write some more performant code inside of our applications. So let's get started right now. We're going to start off by taking a look at a very simple diagram. And then over time, we're going to come back to this diagram right here and add on a lot more detail to it to show you how Node is internally structured. So here's our first iteration. At the very top, we've got a box that represents the JavaScript code that you and I write. So this is the actual code that we place into JavaScript files and then eventually execute at the command line. When we run Node and then index.js at the command line, we are invoking the Node.js project. Now, just like any other JavaScript project out there, Node.js internally has a collection of dependencies that it uses to actually execute your code. Two of the most important dependencies, and these are two dependencies that we're going to focus on quite a bit throughout this course, are the V8 project and the libuv project. The V8 project is an open source JavaScript engine created by Google. The purpose of this project is to be able to execute JavaScript code outside of the browser. And that's what we do when we run our JavaScript code from the terminal. The libuv project over here is a C++ open source project that gives Node access to the operating system's underlying file system. It gives us access to networking, and it also handles some aspects of concurrency as well. So anytime that you show this diagram to someone, their first question might be, OK, so we got one module right here that gives us access to the file system and networking and other stuff. And then we've got this one right here that actually executes our JavaScript code. So what is the purpose of Node.js? And that's a very good question. So I want to give you an idea of why we use Node at all and why we don't directly use V8 or libuv. The first thing to understand is that internally, some of these other libraries are not JavaScript code at all. The V8 project is like 70% C++ code, and libuv over here is 100% C++. So chances are that you, as a JavaScript developer, you probably don't want to be writing C++ code all day. You want to write JavaScript code and just have it work. So that's one of the purposes of Node.js. Node gives us a nice interface to use to relate our JavaScript side of our application to the actual C++ that's running on our computer to actually interpret and execute our JavaScript code. The other thing that Node does is provide a series of wrappers and a very unified and consistent API for us to use inside of our projects. So for example, Node implements the HTTP module and FS, path, crypto. All these modules right here have very consistent APIs and they all ultimately refer to a functionality that is mostly implemented inside of the libuv project over here. So again, you probably don't want to get access to direct C++ code. You want to require in some JavaScript function and use a JavaScript function inside of your code base. So by making use of Node, you don't have to work with all the C++ that exists inside of libuv itself. OK, now we've got a better idea of why we use Node at all. Let's take a quick pause right here, and we're going to continue the next section and continue fleshing out this diagram. In the last section, we started talking about the internals of Node.js, and we had said that the purpose of Node is to give us a nice, consistent API for getting access to functionality that is ultimately implemented inside of V8 in libuv. I want to give you a very concrete and practical example of how this actually works behind the scenes. So in this section, we're going to go through a little bit of an exercise. And this is going to be a lot of fun, but it is going to revolve around kind of clicking around to a lot of different pages inside of our browser. So we're going to look at some different documentation and some source code, but along the way, you'll get a much better idea of what Node.js is really doing for you and me. So this exercise that we're going to go through is this right here. Here's what we're going to do. So at the very top, we're going to first start off by picking out some random function inside the node standard library. We're then going to try to find where that function is implemented in the Node.js source code. So like the actual source code that comprises the Node project. And then once we find that source code, 
we're going to figure out how Node leverages and kind of wraps functionality that is implemented inside of libv8 and libuv. So this is going to be a really fun exercise, and it's going to give you a much better idea of how Node is internally structured and how it works. So step one is to pick a function in the Node standard library. Now, I had said that we were going to pick a random one, but in truth, I already picked one particular function out. And this is going to be a function that we're actually going to use quite a bit later on inside the course as well. So the function that you and I are going to investigate is called, well, let's pull up an example of it right here. Here we go. It's going to be a function called pbkdf2. So that's the actual function name right there. And I know that's a really weird function name. It's the name of an algorithm that is used for hashing some arbitrary data. So this is a function inside of Node's crypto library. And usually it is used to hash a password for storage inside of a database. So again, I know it's a weirdly named function, but it's just the name of some hashing algorithm. That's all. So let's take a look at the actual implementation of PBK DF2 inside the Node code base. And as we go through this process, you're going to very quickly see how Node internally makes use of libuv and the V8 project as well. All right, so I'm going to pull up the Node.js source code on github.com. If you want to follow along, you can open up your own browser and go to github.com node.js slash node. All right, here we go. So here's the node repository. This is all the source code that you have already installed on your computer when you installed Node. Inside this repository, you're going to find a bunch of different files and folders. But there's two folders that are very relevant for what we're trying to do right now. There's the lib directory right here and the src directory right here. The lib folder contains all the JavaScript definitions of functions and modules that you and I require into our projects. So you can think of this lib folder right here as being like JavaScript world or the JavaScript side of the Node project. Then inside the src directory is the C++ implementation of all those functions. So the src directory right here is where Node actually pulls in libuv and the v8 project and actually fleshes out the implementation of all the modules that you and I are used to using, like the FS module, the HTTP module, and so on. So let's first get started by looking up that pbk df2 function inside this lib folder. And we're going to find the JavaScript definition of that function. So inside of lib, we're then going to find the internal directory, which is right here. We'll then find the crypto directory right here. And then finally, we'll find the pbk df2.js file. Here it is right here. All right, here we go. This is a JavaScript file that contains the JavaScript definition of the pbk df2 function. And remember, this is a normal function that is just included inside of the standard library of Node. You're going to find that the contents of this file looks very much like a JavaScript file that you and I might write. So at the very top, you'll find a bunch of require statements. In the body, you'll find a bunch of function de declarations and then down at the very bottom, you'll eventually see an export statement as well. So here's where the actual pbk df2 function gets exported from this file. Let's go up a little bit, and we're going to find where this function actually gets declared. All right, so right about here on line 16 or so, you'll find the definition for pbk df2. So if you and I were to require in this function and then run it from inside of our code base, this is the function that would get executed. Now, this next part that we're going to go through is going to be just a little bit complicated because I'm going to very quickly kind of run through some of the source code that is executed anytime we call this function right here. But eventually, we're going to end up on another part of the code base that starts to take us to like the C++ side of Node.js. So anytime you run this pbkdf2 function, it does a little bit of error checking. It does a little bit more error checking. And then eventually, it calls underscore pbk df2. So let's find the definition for underscore pbk df2 and see what happens inside of there. So I'm going to scroll down. And then on around line 32 or so, you'll find the definition for underscore pbk df2. Inside of here, you'll again see a bunch of error checking, 
air checking, air checking, just a bunch of air checking stuff. You know, all the stuff is air checking. And then eventually you'll see this block of code around line 72 or so. So right here, you'll see a call to another function called pbkdf2. And it takes in all the arguments that were passed to our current function and passes them to this pbkdf2. So this right here is where that hash is actually calculated. Essentially, Node.js takes all the inputs that you provide to this function and it forwards them on to the C++ implementation of this function. So this pbkdf2 thing right here, in all capitals, this is a C++ function. Let's see where this thing actually gets required into this file. If you scroll back up to the top, you're going to see around line 9 or so, where we require in pbkdf2, and that's coming from a very unfamiliar looking require statement. So this says, process.binding, and then crypto. This line of code right here is how Node.js joins up the C++ side of its project to the JavaScript side. So I'm going to show you another diagram that's going to help flesh out the process of all the code that we've looked at so far. All right, here we go. So at the very top, again, is our JavaScript code. Then we went into the Node JavaScript side of the Node repository to look up how that function, pbkdf2, actually gets defined. We looked up a file inside the lib folder, which is all the actual JavaScript code works, and we found that eventually it looks like that pbkdf2 function is defined from something called process.binding. That process.binding thing is what connects the JavaScript world to the C++ world of the Node.js project. Let's take a pause right here. I know we're in the thick of things, but let's take a pause right here. We're gonna come back in the next video and we're gonna to start to explore what that process.binding thing does and how it joins up to the C++ side of the Node project. So quick break and I'll see you in just a minute.